So again, let me reiterate what um, I've been saying this week. Welcome to Advanced CAD. My name is Matt Dickinson, and as promised, a little later than normal because um, I had a few issues. Recorded this video the other day and forgot to turn the microphone on, so it ended up looking a bit rubbish. Got annoyed with myself and then just left it. So um, I'm doing it now, making sure that we get this get this momentum going, if you will. Um, this week's notes. Now I promised that I review specific sections of learning from each each um, key notes, if you will. This one is one of my favourite. However, I have spotted a typo. This all I can do right now is apologise. It's very embarrassing. Bit of a pain in the backside, but. You'll notice on these notes here, it's got a draft of four. It actually should be a draft of two, um, not a draft of four. My mistake, that I do apologize. So here should not be four, should be in fact two. So um, what's key about this? Now you've got all the dimensions there and often drawing by pure dimension can prove to be the biggest difficulty that you've ever seen. Now, when I was in, when I was doing my degree, my lecturer always said to me, if somebody provides you with a poor drawing or provides you with part dimension to constraint, which that's what this is, what you should do is first get all the geometry in there, what you can see. So we know we have line, 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 three point arc, line, line. Here, we're gonna neglect, just for the minute, because the key element about this is, is it's marked out instantly as a radii, which tells me whoever did this was probably did a fillet. So we're going to come back to that. Line, 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 three by arc, and then just finishes off here with a construction line. So what we're going to do is construct that, but not thinking about dimensions and always being vigilant as to where that datum is, because the important thing here you can see that we've got some horizontal constraints right across. That tells me that the endpoints of the lines have been horizontally constrained to the datum with this 26.84 um, diameter offset. So, uh, not diameter, <laughs> um, dimension offset. So I'm into SolidWorks. Let's go new and part. And what we're essentially gonna do is we're gonna construct the part but with rough fashioning. Now, for me personally, I always like to draw stuff where I can imagine it would be. So you'll notice that on the notes, because I am just checking the notes as we're going through, you'll notice on the notes, I did not specifically say pick plane uh, one or whatever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go top plane, because I like to imagine that this casing from this uh, blow dryer is actually laid on a table. Weird, I know, but it is just down to pure um, preference, really. So I'm going to go top plane, and I'm going to go line. Tracking from tracking from the datum, I'm going to go line, 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 line. Uh, let's have a look. Drop down my arcs to a three point arc. Three point arc. Line. 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 And I do this just because, from an engineering perspective, looking at this, you'll be just getting annoyed. And it's just because we're now dealing in a position where we won't always have the dimensions, we won't always have that freedom to know. So, what we're going to do is use as much logic as we can to navigate ourselves around this. So, what I'm first going to do is, I'm interested in getting these into position. So I'm going to press Control, select the datum, select the vertical point, and the next vertical point, and I'm going to add a vertical relation. So now these things are locked into position, which is great news. Uh, I'm going to go Smart Dimension, I'm going to come from my horizontal line to the datum. Try that down. Oh my goodness, my SolidWorks has been set to meters, two seconds. If you do, because this will happen when you're in lesson, if you do, if this happens, 
go up to your options and then where are we document properties we've got a units and I'm gonna go to millimeters and confirm that much better right so we know that um, that dimension is actually 26 0.84 interestingly I don't know if anyone's noticed this but now in SolidWorks when you put a dimension in it seems to flash what it will do because this is the only dimension that's on it it will scale everything else to that relative dimension might be totally pointless might be no use at all but that is what it will do so next thing we know that we have 150 degrees between this and this line and this line so we're going to go 150 then now uh, I've had a few students who did this before they've gone on and gone right I'll dimension this line of 40 don't do that yet because you got to think about it if on the actual notes it's that point after the radius so it's better if we go to the panel fill it now if you don't see fill it there notice the arrow you've got two markers here make sure you're on sketch fill it go on to the point and our dimension is not 10 millimeters it is actually 35 um, millimeter radius right so let's bring that in okay let me just get rid of that Bring that in. I'm actually going to put that down there, just because I, I just it's just to move as much crap out of the way, really, so I can actually model and keep going. Sketch onto here. We've got 40 millimeters, and then here we're going to go. I mean, this is just button punching now. 30 millimeters. Here we're going to go. One one five. What you should start to see is that this is now really starting to take shape, which great news, great news. Now that you, some of you may notice that I've not added the construction line in there yet. Not going to do that yet. What I actually want to do is bring the lower handle a little bit more in now, because I know that if I start to add these in and get down here, there's going to be complaints because there's no specifics just yet. So I'm going to go a smart dimension from the front of the blow dryer to the handle itself. Now you can go there, that is not the dimension that's been placed on the note, it's actually stretched, so it's here. So what I'm actually going to do is go 10, whoops, 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 105, and confirm that. That will then pop it up. Now, again, it's a little bit outside of what we want it to be, I'm just going to drag that over. At this point, it doesn't really matter how I'm going to do it, because... Um, once I start adding these constraints and dimensions, um, it will obviously pop it into place. So I'm now gonna go control, finger on control, select this hand, this point in the handle, this point in the handle, and this point in the handle, and let's see, ah, uh, now I was hoping I could do a double. So just click off, let go of control, click off, gonna press control, select this line and this line. I know that I want them to be perpendicular because on the notes, if you look just above where it says 40 millimeters, you'll see two perpendicular markers. Again, press control, lower end of the, of the handle to the next line. We're gonna make that perpendicular. And now we're ended up with a square section, which is great. To bring it in, I'm gonna make that 40 millimeters. Now, be careful. You see this, this is relative to the plane itself. So this would be relative of if it was the datum, it would be uh, Z. If, it was, if it's the plane itself from the original, it will be Y. So what I actually want to do is just bring that over, let it just exceed past, and you'll notice it goes relative perpendicular to the line. So that's what I want it to be. I'm going to bring that in, make that 40 millimeters. Now, um, again, dimension here we can really start to drop these in because it's going to allow us to start blocking things into play now this level is so over the top dragged that i need to just bring this in a little bit right let the fun commence 
going to press control this is where it's either going to go really right or really wrong I hope it's really right just saying so I press control select the lower three point arc and then oh, select the lower three point arc not the entire sketch and then the front end of the handle now we want this to be tangent and not to that level neither now the beauty is is if I let me, I'm just thinking about the best way of attacking this so leave that like that for the minute I was gonna do it another way but no leave it like that what we're gonna do is add the construction line across make it with a coincidental uh, relationship between the endpoint of the three-point arc and then uh, progress from there so I'm gonna go to line drop the arrow down gonna go to center line now bringing the cursor over I'm gonna locate it to the front end of the here now you can make it concentric I know there'll be a lot of you thinking well why don't you do that it's, I'm, I've, if I'm honest I'm just being lazy once I've tracked it across you'll see the center line operating in that horizontal but you'll also see it tracking all the way on the infinite line also you'll notice that to the front point of where the vertical constraints are it's tracked itself as well to that marker which is good because that's what we want it to do so it means that when I click this the line should be black but the end point being blue that identifies that I can drag it but it is locked to the two relative planes All right so I'll bring it like that so it's now locked in my X plane well, it's locked in my Y plane, but I can um, move freely along the X. Right, so press control. I'm going to select the end point of the three point arc and then um, the construction line here. What I'm going to do is make that concentric. And now we're starting as much as it doesn't look it. Now we're actually starting to get something a little bit more like we wanted it to be few ways of doing this um, what I like to do you'll notice on the notes uh, I tell you what let's put the dimensions on first so I'm gonna go to the smart dimension I'm gonna go to this one now we know from looking at this that this is actually 40 millimeters this should bring it into play and then the second set we know that it's actually 75 as a radius at the minute it's been 407 for me it, it doesn't matter what it is because what we're going to do is restrict it now we're starting to look a little bit more like it but still something desperately missing like I don't know <laughs> look at the three point arc I know exactly what it is so if you look on the notes this is the last piece that most get really mixed up with and get really annoyed with I should say the last one that you're actually looking for is if you look on the notes in fact let me just open up the notes look on the notes look at 75 now if we just zoom into that and bring it in you'll notice that as a concentric marker but there's nothing really there to concentric to it's because the center of that radius which as we know on any radius it's the relative of a circle it means the center of that radius is actually concentric to the datum so I'm going to press control select the center and then select the datum and make that concentric once we do that what it does is it makes it concentric this is related to here because it's tangential the construction line here holds it all in place and in essence that concentric pops it into position so that is the first sketch complete and ready to roll so what we'll do is we'll continue on because I do know that I've introduced a few little little bit of extra annoying bits but I want to show you because it's key about your learning so I'm gonna go features and extrude boss base now this extrusion is a 25 millimeter extrusion with now this is where I made a, um, a key mistake I actually put this originally as four and uh, I sat through this the other day looking and thinking something's not right there then I noticed I put four when it should be two 
So that two, now, if you confirm that two, that is what it should be. So you should end up with your block shape at the minute. I mean, this next bit is dead easy. And there's no point having a set of notes that are just going to continuously um, mess with your head. So I'm going to go fillet. And I'm going to bring in a 16mm fillet. 16. And I'm going to go to this front point. Right down. Now, yeah, I don't know who knows this, but these are, these are adaptive continuous radiuses. So you notice it went dead. And you notice here... It just gives me a, a marker. Now, if I say, look, take it to this edge. What it will do is it will assume that that is a continuous, that I'm happy with that, and then I can confirm it. So if it doesn't always appear, it's just purely because you've not clicked on everything. Um, if, if anybody's curious, by the way, how I get this super magic glow on here, it's just because I am using a NVIDIA Quadra. Um, amazing for CAD, amazing for SIM, absolutely awful for gaming and will not support any games decently just because of the, uh, uh, in essence, how they've been constructed. Right, back to the actual stuff we're meant to be doing. So I'm going to go fill it. This is the next set. So on here, you'll notice we went to 11. I'm going to go here and then over here. And I'm going to go over here. Now I'm going to try my cheek and see if I can get it to adapt. Look at that. Hey, up here for thinking, down there for dancing. Look at that, it's brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to confirm that. Now it's looking like it could kick ass. I like that. Happy days. Okay, so I don't know who's ever done shelling before. So what I'll do with this is I'll just take this as in nobody knows. So if you've done it before, you can quickly fast forward this bit. So we're shelling. You'll notice here, I clicked onto Shell. This is onto Features. Uh, under here, you have Shell. You'll notice it starts off with a 10 typical for it. Now, this Shell, we were talking about two, two millimeter wall thicknesses. Now, if I just click OK, looks like nothing's happened. But if I split it, what Shell actually does is it says, I will make a volumetric shell of what you want However, if I click on faces, I can say I want to remove that face and I want to remove that face. Then, if I shell, what it then does is it, it will shell everything knowing it has to delete a face. So that's where this comes from. It's just that some of you will probably know that inside and out. Um, some may not. It's just one of them that's a great tool, great to know it. And yeah. So what I'll do now is I'm going to go to, because you'll notice on this, this is the rib. This would be step five. On step five, it's I've, I've tried to make it as difficult as possible. Interestingly though, what I've actually given you is a picture beneath to show you where the rib sits and people still, still get mixed up with it. So what I'll do is first I'm going to go to, where is it? There it is. Display style. Drop my display style and I'm going to go to wireframe. And that's what I get. Okay. Now, looking from the perspective that I've given you, I'm actually going to go to view orientation and I'm going to come from the top. Now, what you're actually looking at in them notes is this, but looking upwards. Bit of a pain, I know, but it really helps with um, your understanding it really helps yeah so it makes things a little bit more tricky and I only did it for that reason just because it's about these notes are specifically about adapting to difficult sets of things that you've been shown so I'm going to go to my front plane now Again, just to re reiterate, I'm actually looking from the top. And you'll notice that the 125 millimeters I talked about actually comes from that edge in particular. So I'm gonna go through, gonna go to my front plane, I'm gonna go to sketch and sketch. Now, some of the techniques I'm gonna use on this, I don't think I've explained in the notes because I, I think I've actually done a couple of mistakes on here anyway. So what I'm going to do is put my markers on. I'm going to go to center line. 
I'm going to go to the end point here and I'm going to bring it up just to there. With these center lines, they're great for construction lines, they're great for things like that. And it allows me to do so much. Now, if you look at the actual uh, notes, you'll notice that the point I'm actually coming from is right down here. So I'm just going to draw a line straight up. Going to make that vertical and then I'm going to go on to my dimensions, bring them across and simply go one, two, five. My 125 marker now is here, and this is purely as to where everything sits successfully, which is, is, is great, really good. So, we know that we've got our center line, we know that we're sitting in a good space. Um, I'm gonna go to my circle, bring that in, and I'm just gonna locate my circle here. There's a few things about this circle. Uh, we know it's one millimeter in diameter. I know a few of you will be thinking, why have I not used the rib tool? We could easily use the rib tool. Uh, modeling something like this is not that difficult, but what the rib tool will restrict us with is it won't allow us to do everything that we like as it will just give us a generic rib. As with this, we can control what rib it is with the dimensions of it. We can do an awful lot to it. Um, so what I'll do is bring in a line and locate it to the quarter. And then just bring it so it uh, locates with the bottom face of here. So, um, let's stick on a dimension. Now I'm gonna do a dimension from center line to here and that offset for this dimension, as we know from the notes, is two degrees. Next thing, I'm going to mirror the line. So I've gone to mirror entities, going to the line, and then going to mirror about the central axis here, and then bring that across. And finally, I'm going to close it with a line. Because we're not in surfaces yet, everything must be closed with surfaces. We don't need to. There is plenty of things good and bad about surfaces. So we're going to go to Trim Entities and just bring that back like that. Finally, there's one thing that we've not yet added, which is the 20 millimeter diameter, uh, the 20 millimeter position from the center of the circle to the bottom plane, and that puts us at 16. So we're going to go 20 millimeters, and then we're up in position there like so. Now. Some of you have probably thought you're on off the wrong position. You're in a bad position of plane. So if I bring that round, I'm just going to go back to my view state and bring it back onto full state like this. Some call it realistic. Yeah, really real. Uh, you'll notice now that I'm actually in the wrong place. I'm still on the plane. What if, there's a few ways you could do it. You could put a plane roughly in the middle. You could um, do all sorts to try and get that into position. What I like to do is go features, extrude boss base. Now what this will allow me to do is if I go to offset, I can actually shift my offset like that. What it will do now, now there's a few, I'll show you, there's a few uh, issues with doing it this way, but we can um, adapt to them. So what I'll do is I will go to body. All it asks me for is a body. Then if I come down and then go to second direction, up to body. So I've gone up to body on both and then confirm. You'll notice up to next was not there. It's purely because I, um, with the offset that we put in, that shunt, it had just made a change, made a distance, made a difference, sorry. And that can be a bit of a pain in the backside. Right. Um, 
Now I know this is further down the notes, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, I, I was just messing with you. So what I'm going to do is put this on now. I'm going to go linear dimension, I mean linear pattern. What I want to do is I'm going to borrow this feature from the boss extrude. Well, let me do it Okay. Oh, I just realized what I was doing. Let me just close that and start that again. Linear pattern, it's asking for a direction. I'm saying I'm gonna go along here and it just asked me for a feature, which is that one. And this feature, um, according to the notes, says that we are actually, where are we, where are we? I'm just looking myself now because I can't remember what that distance is. A 50 millimeter linear pattern from, this, from that position. So we're going to go 50 millimeters in that one direction. Now that seems to protrude, which is not good news. Hmm, it's actually caught me off as that one. Right, so, sorry, I just had to freeze the, the video then for a moment because I wasn't sure just about a dimension. It seemed to be a slight miscellaneous, not miscellaneous, just a slight change between this edge here I will look into that, but it doesn't stop us from completing what we're attempting to do. So I'm going to go to linear linear pattern. Um, I'm going to use this edge as my linear direction. I'm not going to do anything for it because I'm not interested. My feature, I'm going to use this. Now because we've used up to bodies and up to next on both, if I go 50 millimeters, what it then does is it just adapts and then brings it an updated here, which is fine. Okay. So, moving on to the next section of this. Now, there is the point of where the, the bolt will travel through for us to cut the profile out. So, I'm going to go to the top plane, well, the top face here, and I'm going to go sketch. I know on the notes it does say that um, we need to make an offset from it, like a, a, a plane offset from it. We don't technically need to do that. I just put that on there for a bit of completion so everybody can see how to do it. So I'm going to put a circle onto there. That's then going to become a dimension of what we are, five millimeter diameter. Then what we're going to do is come from the center point. We're going to go to the upper layer here and we're going to give it a distance of 33.67. And then from the base outer edge here, we go to the midpoint here, and then we're going to make that 21.84. Ah, that went well. 21. Oh, it's because my num locks are numb. It's all good. Give it all that. 21.84. And then confirm that. That then locks the, the sets for position and what we're after. And you'll notice it says create a, a new plane 2.5 millimeters from the edge. And we're going to do a two degree draft. Uh, this draft at this point is right, so don't worry about that one. I'm going to do an extrusion. Now you notice we're actually sitting bang on the plane, but with our new lovely offset technique that we've learned, um, this won't be a case. So I'm going to go first up to body here. I'm going to go an extrusion of two, uh, a draft of two, sorry, and then I'm going to do an offset of 2.5, which will create me that temporary plane. Notice it went the wrong way then, flip the direction, and now we have our mount hole. And it really, really is that simple. So, now let's put it so we can have the vent hole. So again, I'm going to come from the top plane and uh, let me just make sure, no I'm not, no I'm not. I'm actually going to come from the right plane in this case. The, two, the shortcut I'm using by the way, you can select on the plane, press control and eight. 
It is um, a phenomenal shortcut. I've used it for forever. So what I'll do, come from the top edge, I'm going to add a dimension on here and here of 17 millimeters and a point on here of 17 millimeters and what we're going to do a diameter on there so it's 17 millimeters and what we're going to do is we're going to do an extruded cut it's really cool ways of doing this so um let's say everything through here i want to get rid of in a permanent basis i'm going to choose my first way through all i will just so if if this dimension changes this rib changes if it changes its position i can always update and it will make my life so much easier. My second direction is still on through all. I don't want it to be through all. I'll just go up to body. So I'll say there. Oh no, I can see that one going horribly wrong. So I'll go up to next. Up to next will just say the next point of volumetric uh, area for me to cover. Uh, what do you want me to do? And all I'm saying is just cut that away as well. So if you click OK, what we'll end up with now is our mount points for the uh, whatever the electronics is that's going on to it so moving on swiftly let's put on the switch well I think it's a switch hole this is an old set of notes it really is it's one that we put together a long time ago and um, yeah anyway <coughs> we know that this line is flat uh, this face, sorry, is flat, so I'm going to sketch onto that face. Again, control and 8, brings it into play. Mm, look at that. It's actually not, is it? Which, pain in the backside. So, all right, so let's close that. I actually forgot that myself that it's, it's not flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and manipulate these to let me add a plane. I'm gonna to go to here, and I'm gonna to go to here. Last minute, orientated like that, not exactly how I wanted it. I'm gonna do rotation. And I will see if it will allow me to go zero. Always annoys me as that. Never allows you to do exactly what you wanted to. Phenomenal. <laughs> right, so let me just see what I added on for this. Okay, okay. So. Yeah, a few ways of actually being able to produce this. Um, we can come flat to the plane like this. Um, what this will do is make it in plane like that, but that's not really what we wanted, so I'm just going to have a play around again it so it's linearized to that position. So what I'll do is go that point, that line, sorry, and there. See if that'll allow me to bring a line in like that. See, that's tilted it. You see there, it's brought that tilt in. Not really what I was after. So, I'm going to get rid of that edge. That makes it normal to view, which is the, um, the plane now sits looking at the end of the point. Hmm. Just thinking about the best way to actually produce this. So we can go flat to here, but then the switch is linearized in, in that little bit of a direction. So, still not the best way. That, however, is what I want. They're the two vertices of the line itself. So if I click OK, Oh, it's incomplete. Scheiser. 
So for the final one, let me see. Let's have a think. Not the right plan. Will not play a ball on that one. Incomplete vertices. Swine, I say. Swine. See, but that brings that tilt back in. Not really what I was after. does bring that tilt. If you look at that, it brings just that two degree tilt in. Um, not the most ideal. So I want it to be as square to there as possible. <laughs> I'm trying to not overthink this or else I will end up confusing everybody quite a bit. There is some really, really good ways of being able to solve this. Um, and we are gonna, <laughs> we are gonna cover these quite in depth. I just didn't think I'd be doing them now, that's all. Uh, just because of that fact. Tell you what, for the nature of this, we're gonna go flat to that play, that face. Um, I, what I'd like to do in a couple of weeks is perhaps revisit this because there's some key elements about this where I'm, well, I'm just so caught up in two minds here where the types the Tell you what, let's just do it. Let's just let's get the proper line in position. Um, I think I'll be, I think we'd all be a bit more happier if it was like that. So, <laughs> so let's do that. So I'm going to go sketch, and this is not on the notes. I'm just being a little bit over the top with um, perfection. I just want it to be right, you know. So um, I'm going to go to my line, but I'm going to be in a construction line. I'm going to come from the bottom point, and I'm going to insist at this point that it becomes vertical like this. All right? You'll see that it's just that offset because it's that draft that we're talking about, and that gives me a key point to be able to locate, if you will. Now, if I go to sketch, sketch, and we go plane. I'm going to bring this, whoops, whoops, no, that, that point, that point, and that point. What that does now is it will not track against there, there, it will not track against there, it will track against the, should do anyway, it doesn't look like it has. Oh yeah, it has, you look there, get a little bit too excited about this. But if you look there, you can see that it's actually tracked it correctly. So um, let me just pull my exact notes on that. I can't remember how big the hole was. And I'm going to go sketch and sketch. Control and 8. And now I know I am operating in that right plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a corner rectangle from here. Then what I'm going to do is add a dimension from the midpoint the end, whoops, the midpoint the end here, and add it to the top horizontal line here of 40 millimeters. And then hopefully touch wood, this is correct dimension 20. Yeah, there's something not quite right there. I need to revisit that. There's something not quite right there. I'm going to bring that in as five. Hmm. Yeah. 
Right, I've just messed around a little bit more. I'm going to go back to my plane. And <laughs> I think I've spotted another problem here. I'm on a 40 millimeter distance. Now, I've just looked at my original drawing. I don't know where that 40 has come from. I did not put 40. Well, obviously, I have put 40 there. That should actually read of 30. It should be 30 millimeters. Again, massive apologies to everyone. That is incorrect. That's purely me. Um, cannot help it. It has already been done. <laughs> so again, we're going to go from this edge. We're going to go across to the vertical line. And this will become 30. Then I'm going to make this 20. And then make this 5. And I'm going to do an extruder cut. It's actually just out. My plane position there has not worked like I wanted it to. Oh, that's a bummer. Hey, at least I know it's square. Ha! Um, what I'll do is just add a further... But I'm actually just going to stick a little fillet in. Well, I'm actually just going to extend this uh, corner rectangle <laughs> no I'm not I mean to be fair if that is not straight that is not straight it's not right so I'm just gonna remove that plane I'm getting way obsessed with this I'm gonna remove that plane and then let's go on to the plane itself and I'm just gonna sketch directly to it uh... You look there, it's still actually not tracking like I wanted to. Oh. Still not tracking like I wanted to. That's a very odd one. Must admit, never come across that one before. So I'm going to bring this up across to here and then to here. And uh, everything's located in, so what I'll do is I'll come across to here, then we're going to go 30, bring that across, make that a 20, and turn that into a 5. There's clearly something wrong there, um, but we can still make good of this. So I'm going to do extruded cut. Again, with this, it, uh, all I'm going to do is up to surface in this one, up to surface. This allows me then to just say that section, get rid of it. And if there's any further changes, I can make that change. But yeah, that section there, there's something not quite right. I will, I'm going to revisit these notes, but we are going to complete the important aspects of the learn on these things. <clears throat> Finally, we're nearly there now, nearly finished, nearly complete. So let's get a sketch on there. And coming from that center point, we know that the outside of that is actually three millimeters. We know that next internal point is actually 1.5. Now you'll notice I'm doing it all on one sketch. A lot of people get very annoyed with this, but I will show you why. We're going to share sketching. These are just some techniques that some of you might not use before, some of you may have used. They're a real benefit if you're doing all different types of things. If you're doing intelligent sketching, you'll need to be able to continuously relate these things. So I'll do extruded cut. I'm going to bring... Now you see how here, just selected what it can, which is the internal ring. If I go selected uh, contours, what I actually want is I want this and I want this. Now I know looking at the notes that this is an extruded cut of three millimeters. So I bring that back, go to three millimeters, and then boom, we've actually got the first set there. Now this is a, a countersunk, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the sketch again and you'll notice I expand, expanded the extruded cut and I'm going to go to another extruded cut. Replicating the same process, I'm going to go from the sketch, just delete that out for a second, 
and I'm going to choose the internal point. And at this point now, all I do is I make that 10 millimeters. What this then allows me to do is if you now take a look, now give you all of it in one single hole, in one single sketch. So that is the hole complete. Phenomenal. Uh, have I missed anything? I don't think I've missed anything. Okay, so let's get this. This is what's going to prove to be a little bit tricky because of that. There's something not quite right. It's, it's, it's irritating me a bit, as you can probably tell. I'm going to go to the top plane and I'm going to put my sketch on. What I'll do first is I'm going to put on these three point angles. So if I go like that, that, oops, I go like that, then over there, then like that, I can start to position the first one. So I'm going to go dimension, come from my end point of the actual, oh, excuse me, oh, excuse me, and this becomes one and five. Then we know from the notes that the thickness on this is actually two millimeters. And we know that the length of said corner rectangle is uh, 43. And we know that the degree from the off point here to here is 35. Oh, excuse me. And we know that the offset from the top point to the corner rectangle is five. Hmm. I'm going to spin that round because it's starting to confuse me. There we go. There we go. So I'm on 43, 43, 45, 45, and 2. Okay. So then this is... What we're going to then do is we're going to use linear pattern. It needs an x-axis. needs a y-axis. Uh, what it will do, because we're in a sketch, it will use what it's got. So I'm going to select this, this, and this, and this. Notice that it's pushing along the X. I'm going to leave it on a 1, but I want to push down on the Y. I'm a bit sceptic here. Look at that, dude. So let's... Yeah, that's actually protruding through the target. Hmm. I wonder if I've made a mistake here. I'm starting to think I have. But let's just look at the notes. Uh, each copy part should be six millimeters apart. Six millimeters. Look at that. Oh, thought I made a major mistake there, but clearly I'm still in good luck. So come out of there and then let's do an extruded cut and take it, because we're doing extruded cut through everything, I'm gonna go through all, okay. Um, trying to see if we put any fillets on or anything. So if you've not done already, save the part. Um, some of these issues around these areas, I'm gonna revisit myself because I'm a little bit concerned that there's something not quite right there. So let me revisit that. Uh, I hope you found these a, a real um, use and I hope that you practice this because it's all right doing these things. It's all right making cool designs and things, but it's important to practice what you've been doing and it's important to revise as to what how these techniques work. A lot of the instances with CAD always comes down to practice and just looking at what you're doing. Um, the trickiness in this has been about the actual 
drawings themselves. They weren't clear. I made them not clear. Some of them now looking at these really shows that I made them so unclear and I had a few issues. Um, but please, if you have any comments, please feel free to come and see me in my office. And if not, I will see you bright and early in CAD at 9am or I will see you in the afternoon in CAD at 2. Um, I will upload this now and I will speak to you soon. See you later.